What's up, YouTube? Pokey Prime here. Prime ready to deliver you our week two team builder for the IPBL yeah, the channel. Last week we were able to win 3 0 against uh, Justin and the Tony Typhlosions by cleaning up a late game with uh, Pure Wet and Meloetta, which is awesome. I'm so glad that, that thing worked out. This week we are probably taking on one of the toughest looking teams in the entire league. That is Jen and the Carolina Cutie Flies. For some reason, we somehow allowed this thing to happen. So we allowed this to be in the league. I don't know why. I don't know how. If it's still in the league next season, I'm drafting it. Screw all of you. I am drafting it. You know it. But, um, yeah. Uh, she has Mega Metagross, Victini, Rotom Wash, Blissey, Dawnfan, Haxorus, Jolteon, Diancie, Drapion, Munchan, Gastrodon, and Gorgas. So, really, really tough looking team here, but I think that we can beat it. Um, I have my ways, I have my thought processes on in my head as to how this match is going to go down, and this match is going to go down a lot with Mega Bennett. Mega Bennett's going to put in a lot of work this week. Mega Bennett has to put in a lot of work this week. That's, this thing is our main way of beating this team. Our main 100% way of beating this team. Uh, we are running 248 HP, 164 defense, and 96 special defense. Uh, this way, we are taking. I think after we burn Mega Metagross, we're taking no more than 35% from a Meteor Mash, uh, which is it's a lot less from like Iron Head and Zen Hip and stuff like that. So uh, after we burn the Mega Metagross, we are going to burn the, burn the Gross. Like like our goal this match. Burn the gross, burn the washing machine, uh, burn the elephant, burn the, the dragon, burn the jolt, burn the burn the rock thing, burn the scorpion, burn Muhammad Ali, burn the snail, and burn the pumpkin. Like that's I, 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 this whole match is Operation Burn Her Team, burn her whole team besides the Blissey because it's stupid and there's no reason to do that. Burn the team. This burn the team, burn everything. It needs to happen. We have the destiny bond because there's one thing on that team that we can't burn. One Pokemon that we cannot burn that is Victini. Now Victini doesn't want to switch into us, but if it knows it's going, if it knows we're going for Will O Wisps, it's gonna want to come in. Now we're physically bulky, but it's a Victini. Do I need to say that out loud again? It's a fucking Victini. It's gonna blow us back with a banded V cream. But if it does want to blow us back, then we click the destiny bomb. If it's not gonna blow us back, then we'll click knockoff. We'll, we'll take get rid of the band and make it a lot less useful. But if it is gonna blow us back, we click destiny bomb and the Victini's gone. We keep this thing around as much as we can throughout the match, burn as many things as possible. We taunt the Blissey as much as possible to keep it from removing those burns, right? And then we sacrifice it to Victini. We sacrifice it to the Victini god, because, mm -hmm. let's be honest, if Victini is in the scenario, we straight up lose. Like, like Victini, if we can get rid of Victini, then we're good. So, uh, Mega Bennett's entire goal in this match is to screw with Jen's team. Uh, honestly, I can see this thing being my lead. I can really see me leading with uh, Mega Bennett here just to try and whittle down the team early and just stay in as much as possible and fuck it up. But, uh, you know, it's definitely... If Victini doesn't come, this thing screws her entire team up. This thing screws up the whole team. Willow Wisping, the Hacks, like Willow Wisping, the Donovan Haxorus, Mega Metagross, Diane C, Drapion, Hitmonchan, and like, like, like all these things get freaking wrecked by Willow Wisp. Diane C a little less though, but half the team gets wrecked by Willow Wisp. If I can Willow Wisp half the team, then it just gets destroyed. And if I can burn some of the special attackers, then it get, allows them to get whittled down as well. That's why we have that little bit of special bulk, so we can maybe live a hit from one of them and you know, burn it and start working it out. 
because I like whittling down threats. And that's the whole purpose of this sentence week, is just to whittle down threats like a boss. So, Bennett is going to put in a lot of work this week. The knockoff is literally just for the utility of the items. Taunt is just for the Blissey. I needed the taunt for the Blissey so that I can wall it. I need to wall that Blissey entirely so that it can't do shit to me. It can't do shit. It, it, basically, the Blissey doesn't... As far as I'm concerned, Blissey's not allowed to do anything unless I tell it it can do something. That's that's literally what my goal is. I'm going to make the Blissey my bitch in this match with this banana. So, yeah, so that's cool. Next up, we have Kidney Stone. Kidney Stone, our fortress, running a specially defensive set. I did not put the, the eight EVs anywhere. I will put those into attack. Go. Uh, we were rocking leftover sturdy rapid spin bolt switch gyro ball stealth rocks. Again, it's just a standard set. We're running a specially bulky set this week because this is our switch into this is our this is going to be our switch into uh, well, Jolteon we can take a hit from. Uh, this switches into to Diancy perfectly. Uh, if Diancy comes, we switch into Diancy with this thing. We can switch into Drapion pretty easily with this thing. Uh, we can switch into Gastrodon. We can switch into Rotom Wash. Actually, this thing doesn't really want to be especially defensive. Why did I make him especially bulky? Fuck that. Fuck that shit. Fuck that. No, we're going okay, physically defensive. Because now, now you switch into, like, you switch into Mega Metagross, you switch into Dawn Fang, you switch into Haxorus, you switch into. Uh, you still switch into Diancy, because Diancy can touch you. You still switch into you switch into Drapion, you switch into Hitmonchan if it doesn't have Fire Punch, you switch into Gastrodon, you switch into Gorgon, you switch into everything. So uh, physically defensive is gonna be our way to go. But uh Rapid Spin Volt switch Gyro Ball. Gyro Ball's for the Diancy. I wanna be able to hit that thing really hard, and this is just gonna be a good move to play against uh, got a good portion of the team, because everything's faster than the Fortress, and that's just the bottom line. Everything is faster than the Fortress. It's, it's not an uncommon thing, everything just faster than Fortress. It's, it's slow. It's its job. Bolt Switch is going to be clutch because if we can get our Bolt Switch going, we can get out of there and avoid damn, and avoid too much bullshit. And since it's a slow mod, it's going to have a slow Bolt Switch, so we can guarantee uh, if we can live a hit, we're guaranteed to get our Bolt Switch off and get the right mod in to handle the job. We have the Stealth Rocks because there's a decent amount of things on their team that uh, gets whittled down. And she, last week she did not click. She did not click the. Uh, she did not click the uh, rapid spin button. She did not click the rapid spin button. I don't know why she wouldn't click the rapid spin button, but the rapid spin button was not clicked at all. She had like ten different opportunities to click rapid spin, but didn't. So. Uh, Dawn Fan is definitely a threat here, but I think that we can beat it 100%. If she doesn't click Rapid Spin at all, that's fine, because then the Rocks will whittle down the Victini, really weaken it, uh, whittle down the Jolteon, because it likes to Volt Switch around a lot, and it'll, it'll whittle down the entire team, because I plan on forcing Switches a lot this team. I plan on forcing Switches a lot this matchup. Dawnfans are only form of hazard removal, which isn't a bad thing. Dawnfan and Hitmonchan, which isn't a bad thing, but I can spin block that, which is really good. And I have a really good spin blocker for Dawnfan. Dawnfan is the only way that she brings to remove hazards. I can spin block it with this baby right here. Optimus, our goaler, this god, rocking soft sand with iron fist. Sub, rock polish, earthquake, shadow punch. This is a this is another switch in. I brought, see, I noticed I brought two ghost types because it's a bliss. Because Blissey, Taunted Blissey can't touch this. Taunted Blissey can't touch anyone. And Taunted Blissey cannot touch Mega Banan. And Untaunted Blissey, 1v1 versus Golurk, I get a sub up every time. If it tries to Toxic, doesn't matter, I have a sub. It can't Seismic Toss me, it can't do anything. So I get a free sub up against Chansey, or Blissey, every single time. Like if I have a situation where it's, where it's uh, Fortress versus Blissey, Blissey can size toss for Fortress, that's fine, I get a slow bolt switch out, boom, bring in Golurk, sub, rock polish, kill things. Kill things. 
Blissey can't take too many earthquakes. Blissey also can't tip, can't break my sub. She also doesn't really have too many things that want to switch into earthquakes. Uh, if the Rotom Wash is gone, I can click Earth. I can spam the hell out of earthquake. Uh, if Gorgeist is there, I just I can click Shadow. I can, if, if it comes in on an earthquake, I click Shadow Punch. Mega Metagross gets earthquaked. Fatini gets earthquaked. Uh, Rotom Wash will get Shadow Punch a couple times. It's defensive. Uh, Bliss can get Earthquake. Dawn Fan can get Earthquake or Shadow Punch. Axers can take either. Jolteon's gonna get Mollywalk by an Earthquake. Diancie gets Earthquake. Di Drapion gets Earthquake. Himonchan can take. Himonchan can get hit by either. Gastron will get hit by either. And I can Shadow Punch the more guys. With this spread, uh, with 198 speed here, we actually outspeed a Jolteon. Uh, a Jolteon at max speed. So, if it's max speed, tend to jolt on, you can have to speed it after a rock polish, and then earthquake the fuck out of it. Make it my bitch. Raw. So, that's cool stuff. Um, so, yeah, this thing pretty much can tear through the team. Uh, if I can get this thing in on Blissey for free, I basically win. I basically could win. Sub rock polish goaler, but I had a lot of work this week, so I'm looking forward to it. Next up, we have Shroomzy the Amoongus, and I know what you're about to say. Before you say it, before you say it, I'm going to tell you what you're about to tell me, right? You're about to say, But Jeff, he has a mega, she has a Mega Metagross and a Victini. Two things that absolutely body Amoongus. Am I going to stay in on a Mega Metagross or a Victini? Am I going to switch in on a Mega Metagross or a Victini? No! 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 Will they maybe switch in on me? Yeah. For sure. Do I have the move that, that that murders those things? Yeah. Foul play will absolutely body Victini, body Mega Metagross. They don't want to come in on that, and they don't really want to safely come in either on the spore. If if I can if I if I have not put something to sleep on our team yet. I can just click Spore almost every time. If Gorgeist isn't there, I click Spore every time I bring Amoongus in. Because then every time Amoongus is in, something falls asleep. And then I can capitalize off of that mod being asleep. By going for the appropriate move. So, this thing can still wall a large portion of the team. This thing switches in on Jolteon, this thing switches in on Dawnfan, beautifully. This thing switches in on Rotom Wash, beautifully. This thing switches on Drapion, really nicely. This thing can switch in on Hitmonchan, kinda. This thing switches in on Diancie, amazingly. This thing switches in on Gastrodon. This thing can switch in on a lot of different ponds, really safely, and then click Spore. And then just click Spore. Like, like, it, it literally just clicks Spore. Click, click Spore all game, uh, if the gas, if the Gorgeist isn't there. If the Gorgeist is there, we click Foul Play, because she might go into the Gorgeist to prevent the Spore. And then the Gorgeist gets uh, bopped in the nose by a Foul Play, and we have fun. And my dog is on top of me. He is just, he's all types of hyper, and I don't know why it's, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. You should be asleep. Shadow, you should be asleep. Why are you not asleep? What a dog, what a dog. Uh, lastly, we have the HP ground, just because with our moveset, we can't touch the Drapion. Even though we can put it to sleep, we can't touch it, so having the HP ground just allows us to hit that thing. So it's at least something that we can do to the Drapion uh, with Amoongus, so we're not walled by it. But still, uh, Overall, like, I, I just figured with only one grass type of my opponent's team and one thing to stop Spore, outside of bringing something with safety goggles, which I don't necessarily think she'll do. If she does, then I'll be super impressed, but uh, I don't really think she'll do that, but it's possible. So we'll see what happens, but uh, yeah, that is going to be our Amoongus. Next up, we have Zap2, the Zapdos, making its season debut. Three season debuts, good stuff. 
Uh, we're actually running a speedy scarfed Zapdos. Zapdos. Why did I leave these EVs out? Throw them in HP. Uh, Volt Switch, Heat Wave, HP Grass, and Thunder Wave. Yes, Scarf Thunder Wave. Uh, really, really interesting stuff. Um, the Scarf Thunder Wave is for the Victini. Entirely for the Victini. It's for the Victini. Now, this is it's a, it's, it's a mixture of for the Victini and for the Haxorus. Okay, so here's here's my situation. Right, Haxorus comes in here. Right, Haxorus is in against us. Or we end up in a situation one v one versus Haxers, right? If we can if we can get some momentum out, get into the get in against the Haxers, right? We go for T wave. If he has a if if the Haxers is Lum, if it's a Dragon Dance Lum set, we will still outspeed after the Dragon Dance, and we can then still paralyze it. We might die. We might get lucky and get a full para. Who knows? But either way, we will be able to paralyze that thing. Same with the Victini. We might still die if it's banded or scarf. If it's banded, we might still die, but then we'll at least outspeed with everything else. If it's not banded, we probably won't die, and we can have it super crippled. And then it, it being scarf doesn't matter. So that could be really clutch for us. Uh, Volt Switch just kind of keeps the momentum going for our team, so we have two Volt Switchers, because my opponent has only one mod that stops that, and I'm not really worried about it. Um, Heat Wave is for the, the, the Gorgeist and the Mega Metagross, how I can use it effectively. HP Grass is for the Dawn Fan and the Gastrodon, because both of them want to switch in uh, every time to the Electrotech move. Uh, so that's a thing. And then we have the Thunder Wave, which I already explained. So that's going to be our Zap Dose set for this week. Lastly, we have the beautiful and wonderful Old Fateful. Blue Volcanion. This is my immediate switch in to Victini. Uh, if I see Victini, this thing comes in. Uh, we're going to check early on if it's banded. Because we can come in on a V Create. We come in on a V Create, we're going to take a decent amount of damage. If it switches out, it's going to definitely be banded. If it stays in, it's probably going for Bolt Strike. And we can definitely uh, finish it off with a Steam Eruption. Because uh, we will live with the Con and take it out. This is our immediate way to beat Victini, so, we, and, and if we can use this method instead of the Binette method, then we can save our Binette for tearing holes through the rest of our team. I did not put a fourth move here, I don't know why. I, no, I was debating, I was debating Superpower for the Blissey, but I don't think that's a good logical move to have on this set, because that would screw with me a little bit. Um... I just don't know what other move I can have for this thing. Four move slot syndrome is such a problem. Four move slot syndrome is a problem. Do I, do I really want to run? Do I run flame charge and try to have some things? Maybe. Be kind of dope. Potentially. Um. I think I run Earth Power. I think I just run Earth Power. Just for the simple fact that there's a lot of ground weaknesses on the team, so Earth Power can come in handy. But, uh, Earth Power can hit the ground weaknesses. HP Grass is for that Gastron that loves switching it on Steam Eruptions. Um, Fire Blast is there for Stab, and it's there to blow the Mega Metagross away. And the, uh, what else we got? That. <laughs> We are going to blow away four guys, and then steam eruptions for everything else. Steam eruptions so spammable because they're just enchant the burn. So hopefully that will pan out. But uh, that's going to be our team: a two face Jen and the Carolina Cutie Flies. Uh, going to be a tough matchup, but I have faith in our squad. I have faith. This is easily one of the better teams I've ever drafted. I think we can pull it off. I'm really really excited for this match. I've never battled Jen before, so this is going to be a lot of fun. But uh. Yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. Please make sure to leave a like down below and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, guys, I am Poke Primer, and I am signing off. What's up, YouTube? Poke Primer here. Primer made to deliver you our week two battle in the IPBL.
That's what I'm officially dubbing it for the channel, so deal with it. If it's not true, I don't care. But, yeah. Uh, this week, we are taking on Jen and the Cuddly Cutie Fly... Or, not the Cuddly Cutie Flies. Her showdown name's Cuddly Cutie Fly. I'm staring at it. The Carolina Cutie Flies. She's currently 1-0 with a plus-1 differential after having a very close match last week against uh, Chris's fiance Elsie, who uh, is actually really good for having not played competitive before, which is really impressive. And, hold on. Sorry about that. But, um... Yeah, we're playing Jen this week. And, uh, you guys saw our team builder right before this. Uh, we are bringing Mega Manette, Fortress, Golurk, Amoongus, Zapdos, and Volcanion for the squad this week. As you can see, she decided to bring... Uh, she brought Blissey. She brought Dawn Fan. She got Victini. She's got Mega Metagross. She's got the Diancie. And she has the Haxorus. A lot of threats. A lot of threats. Uh, a couple things I'm really happy about. Uh, I don't see... I do not see the... Uh, the Rotom Wash, which is huge. I also don't see the Jolteon, so she has no Volt Switch potential, so she just has U-Turn ability in the Victini as her only form of uh, momentum grabbing uh, switches, so that's really cool for us. Um, hazards are going to be tough this match because of the Dawn fans, it's going to be a pain in the ass to get them up. Uh, Drapion is not there, which I was kind of worried about because of its typing and everything. Hitmonchan did not come because I, I had nothing for it, which is really good. Us. Um, Gastrodon's not there, which is really good. And Gorgeist, which would have been a huge pain in the ass, did not come either. So that is awesome. But uh, I'm, I've stalled enough. Uh, let's go ahead. We're going to get into this match. I'm excited. This is going to be a good one. So I hope you guys enjoy. So we're going to lead off with Play With Me, our Mega Banette, as she is going to lead off with her Dawn Fan right off the bat. I'm going to go ahead, stay in a Mega Evolve, and I'm going to go for the Will-O-Wisp. And uh, she's going to switch into Blissey to take that burn, which is perfectly fine. It's a little chip damage on the Blissey. I'm going to go immediately for the Taunt, because I don't want this thing doing anything to me. I want The, the goal of having Taunt in the set was to stop Blissey, and that's what it did. So, she's going to switch here. She can't do anything to me. She's going to go into the Diancie as I go for the knockoff. I'm going to get rid of this thing. But Beery Bear is really interesting. I'm going to burn this thing because I know it probably packs Diamond Storm. She's just going to go for the Moonblast anyway, which is perfectly fine. I, I'm, I'm totally okay with that. So, I'm going to switch here. I don't want to take any more damage. I'm going to go into Amoongus who can completely wall this thing to no end. Now, this play right here is interesting. Uh, she does go for the HP fire, as you can see. Uh, I actually just believe I went for the spore here, predicting her to switch out into something else, because I don't think she, I, I didn't think she would want to stay in and take a uh, take a Giga Drain from Amoongus. I figured she would switch into uh, either the Victini or the Mega Metagross. So that's why I went for the spore, uh, trying to catch one of those things on the switch in. Uh, she, good play on staying in on that part. So I am actually just going to go ahead and go for the Giga Drain this turn. I'm going to take a crit HP fire and still swallow it. We're going to get the Giga Drain off, but it's not enough, and I don't want to chance Amoongus at this point. I don't need Amoongus going down at this point. So I'm going to switch out. This thing's going to die to burn anyway. I'm going to go into Old Faithful here, who doesn't even give a shit about an HP fire. Like, this thing could not care about an HP fire less. She's going to go into her Blissey, which completely walls Volcanion, so that's unfortunate. So I'm going to have to go into my Golurk, because she goes for the Thunder Wave, revealing that, which is really huge. So now I, I'm free to just go for an Earthquake. It does so much damage. So much damage. And honestly, while I'm standing in front of this thing, I'm just going to click Earthquake, because it's the most damaging move I have. I don't want to waste time trying to sub up. She actually goes for Counter, which is huge, because uh, a lot of people don't remember, know this, and probably don't know this, uh, or I'm just a scrub, but Counter and Mirror Coat, those moves do go based off type effectiveness. Granted, it's not going to be super effective if, you know, you use Counter on a on a normal type or something like that, but uh, Counter against a Ghost type or Mirror Coat against a Dark type will not work. So that is 
really, really huge stuff, really, really important information to know, just for those of you who were not fully aware of that. So that is huge. So now she has to switch. She has to switch here. So I'm going to get an Earthquake off on this Dawn Fan, and it's going to do a really decent chunk of damage. Now, I don't want to stay in here. I don't want Golurk taking unnecessary damage. So I'm actually going to go into Volcanion predicting the rocks. But instead, she does go for, straight for the Earthquake, which is fine. I, I'm able to just fire off a free Steam Eruption here. No, no issues with that. So I'm going to get that Steam Eruption off. And it's going to hit the Blissey. Kind of hard. I'm going to go back into Golurk because Golurk walls this thing entirely. Uh, which is really good. Uh, she's going to have to switch and again go out into the Dawn Fan as I'm going to get off another Earthquake and get a crit this time, which is huge. That crit is huge for this matchup because now I am actually able to take out the Dawn Fan. And that means no rocks for her and no spinner for her. So she goes into the Mega Metagross and this turn is huge. I'm going to go for the Earthquake. That's a free 75%. On this Mega Metagross. It can live any one hit. She's going to go for the Ice Punch. And her Mega Metagross is extremely talented. And picks up the Freeze on my Golurk. Which is enormous. Because hitting that thing for 75% right off the bat here. Would have been absolutely astronomical for this matchup. But unfortunately we do get Frozen Solid. And that means we pretty much just have to sack off our Golurk at this point. She goes for the Earthquake uh, just to take us out. Uh, no need to race that, that PP. I'm going to go into play with me here and try to burn this thing. I need it burned. And she's going to make the smart play and go into the Victini. Now right here I needed to check something. So I go into Amoongus and she actually goes for the Bolt Strike predicting the switch. And now based upon that damage, of course she gets the Para by the way. That was just something I wanted to note. Of course she gets the Bolt Strike Para. I... Don't know off the top of my head what the percentage is for Bolt Strike to get a para. But still, that's really fucking annoying. But, uh, based on that damage, based on her doing 16% to me, okay? I ran the calcs. There's no way she's banded. So I determined that she was scarfed. So that made me a little happier for later in the, for, for the eventual late game. Uh, I, could, I knew I could take, uh, a lot more hits from this thing with it being, uh, scarfed over banded. So that's huge. So, knowing that it's Scarfed, I'm able to just stay in with Amoongus, and I click Spore, because there's no reason not to. And, of course, I'm fully paired. That's that's the first of many. We're, we're going to keep a tally now. That's one full para. Okay. Uh, so, I'm going to go into Fortress here, as she's just going to go for the Thunder Wave on the Switch, which is fine. I'm going to just be paralyzed and be, be a Fortress. And I'm going to try to get my rocks up. Nope, that's one full para. That's two full paras now. Two, two, two full paras. So he decides to toss me again. And we're going to get a third full para. Oh boy, we're racking them up this time, boys. We're racking up these paras. I just want, I just wanted my rocks. And there's my rocks. There's my rocks. See? My rocks are nice and pretty. They're there. And now she's going to decide to toss again. As I actually go for the Volt Switch, I'm saving this thing for Death Fodder later on. I just need it to be around for Death Fodder. I'm going to go into Playtime, who can easily wall this Blissey without any issues. However, I actually decide, knowing that she's going to switch, I'm going to go for the knockoff and just get chip damage off in the uh, Mega Metagross. I'm going to burn this thing now, which is great. She stays in on it. Uh, she did tell me after the match she forgot that uh, Prankster Willow was a thing. Uh, the Meteor Mash still does a decent chunk of damage, so I know I can, I, I know I can live a second one, but I don't want to chance it. So I am going to switch here. Uh, having this thing burned is huge, because I can go freely into Zap 2, the Zapdos, and swallow a Meteor Mash like it's nothing. And now I can freely go for a Volt Switch and pick up the KO on the Mega Metagross, which is great. So, Zapdos getting its first KO. Awesome stuff. Go into Volcanion as she's going to go into the Victini. This is huge. The Wakan Berry pops. We live on 2% from the Bolt Strike. If she'd been banded, we would have been dead. We live on 2% and Steam Eruption's able to take out the Victini. In comes the Haxorus, and this is where things get scary. I have to click Steam Eruption here. Knowing this thing's going to DD, I had to click Steam Eruption. Get as much damage as possible. A huge damage on a resisted hit. That's great. He, she's going to go for some kind of hidden power. I'm not sure what kind it is, but it's going to be able to take us out. I go into Zap 2, and this this is this is huge. I Clicking Thunder Wave, I believe, was a slight misplay, because I should have just gone for the Thunderbolt, for the Dan- er, I believe I actually- No, I didn't have Thunderbolt. What did I have? 
I had something for, I had something else for damage, but I had moves for damage. I should have clicked the volt switch at least. And then I could have vaulted out into something else to sack it and then come back into Zapdos and sack and, and, and killed it with another volt switch, but if the first volt switch didn't kill, but I went for the Thunder Wave and immediately as soon as I clicked it I was like, Oh shit. This thing is probably Lum. Lo and behold, there's a Lum. So right there, huge, huge misplay. As the Outrage is going to come through and Zapdos is going to absolutely get melted. Now, here's another... <laughs> oh, this play right here is huge. Uh, so I have my Moongus here and I'm like, alright, all you have to do is not get fully paralyzed. And we're clicking foul play and then we win this match. 3-0. Beautiful, right? Could have been a 3-0 victory. Should have been a 3-0 victory. So we're going to get hit with Outrage. We're going to eat that baby up. It's going to get confused. And we get fully paired. That is four full pairs in this matchup. Four whole pairs, right? Huge, good stuff. And, uh, of course, she doesn't hit herself in confusion. And uh, down goes Shroomzy. So that's unfortunate. I go into Fortress here, and I'm like, don't get full paired. She's able to hit herself in confusion, okay? That's huge. Now, I went for Gyro Ball. If I get full paired here, we lose. We lose the game. Unless she hits herself a, a second time in a row, we lose the game if she's not full paired. Essentially. Or if, she, or if, I, if I'm full paired here, we lose the game. And Kitty Stone pulls through, gets the Gyro Ball off on the Haxorus, and that is huge. That is huge. Because now, Blissey's here. Blissey is here. Blissey is able to go for the Seismic Toss and kill off our Fortress. I decided to just let it go, because there's no point in just switching into Bennett, switch, switching Bennett into a Thunder Wave. But uh, she decides to forfeit at this point, which essentially just gives Mega Bennett the, the final kill. On the blit on the Blissey, uh, because honestly, all that, all that would have happened was Blissey would have been taunted immediately as soon as uh, Bennett came in. I had clicked taunt that turn that she forfeited, and I would have literally just clicked knock off until this thing was dead. Uh, the taunt ran out. I clicked taunt again, and then I knock off repeatedly until it's gone. Fantastic game, Jen. Uh, wow. <laughs> That shit was wild. Uh, that that whole game was absolutely insane. Um, really, really great match. Uh, cannot wait to. Uh, can, uh, hopefully, maybe hopefully, uh, you know things all work out for the both of us, and we can maybe meet again in playoffs because this was an absolute hell of a game. Uh, I I don't even know what to say. That the hacks in this game was wild. But it was balanced on both sides, I'd say. It was it was pretty balanced throughout the match. And it was overall just both both of us played fantastically, I feel. And I, I'm just really proud of this matchup. This was a good match. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you have, please make sure to leave a like down below and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, next week. Next week. Already looking for next week, man. Oh, man. Looking to next week. Who do we got next week? Next week, we are taking on Juwan and the Alabama Arcanines. Oh, Lord. One of the biggest threats in this league just because of the fact that he's Juwan. Juwan is a really, really good battler. One of the best that I know. And his team is terrifying. So we're going to have to really, really, really uh, step our prep game up to beat him. But I think we can definitely do it. Uh... I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be one hell of a matchup. And I can't wait. But, yeah. Until then, guys. Uh, I'm going to get out of here. I'm Poke Primer.